Boys and girls, I miss you so much, but we finally have some beautiful sunshine. So Mrs. Sparks is out on her front porch and I am going to plant some things with you today. So um, I want to talk to you a little bit about different kinds of plants and um, things that you can be planting right now in your house to get ready to go outside in a garden later. And so Mr. Sparks went out and bought some plants this morning. I'm going to show you a little bit. Let me flip the camera. He found all kinds of pretty flowers. So I'm going to show you just a few of them. This one is a beautiful Gerber daisy and it's kind of pink. This one says it is, oh, I don't know how to say that. A sunflower beetle dianthus, maybe. Shows you what it's going to look like. And then on the back side of these tags, it tells you how to take care of them. So on the back side of this one, it says this wonderful fragrance series offers large col colorful flowers. A top, neat clumps of deep green foliage that is heat resistant. This is an excellent choice for containers, front of the border or cutting garden. So I could plant that in three different places. I could put it in a pot. I could put it in the front of my flower garden. Oh, don't show that. That looks bad. Which isn't cleaned out yet, but we're going to start working on that. Or I could put that along my garden edge. So we're going to plant a little garden outside. But today I'm just going to show you some things with pots and some easy things. It tells me how much water it needs. It needs to be semi-moist. It tells me how tall it's going to be. So that says average size, six to 12 inches height and six to 12 inches wide. So when I plant this, I'm going to make sure I leave enough room for it to grow big. So an example would be this little bush that's right here by my S flag. That little bush, when it grows bigger, will be as big as that bush. And so I definitely want to leave enough room around it so that it grows into a bigger space and it has plenty of room to grow. That means the temperature, and we talked about temperature the other day. This can survive to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's freezing. If it goes below 32 degrees, it's not going to be able to survive. And then it continues to tell me the care instructions. So, Mr. Sparks bought all kinds of plants. I've already put some of them in my pots. This is a yellow Gerber daisy. Not sure what this one is. Let me look. It says a di dianthus, maybe? This one is beautiful. I love the purple pot, too. But look at those blooms already. Isn't that pretty? That one is a high purple hyacinth. I can't pronounce these very well. And then he got three different colors of tulips for us. Tulips are my favorite flower to have out at Easter time. And you can see some of these starting to bud out right here. Do you see that little flower bud right there in the center? That is going to be a flower. I think one of these had a little bigger one. There's one right there and you can kind of see the pink color at the top. So that one's going to be pink. And, pink and this one I think might be pink and purple. But you have to be very gentle when you touch these and be very careful. Look at this leaf that's starting to unfold. See how it's coming? It's not separated yet but that's how it grows up and it starts to uncurl the leaves and then the leaves will look like this. It's kind of cool, huh? And then I've got two other little containers. This is going to be an English daisy and this one is going to be something called a dream sickle. So I've got all different colors. I can plant a rainbow with the good plants that Mr. Sparks came up with. And of course he had to go out to a, a, a 
what I want to say, greenhouse to get these plants that are already started. But Mrs. Sparks started these last year in the spring and these come back. So you can see this pot has some dead stuff in it still. And some of the plants didn't make it through very well for the winter time. We pushed these in the garage, but some of them did an awesome job and look at all the flowers and the new greenery that I have coming out. Hey Steph, give that boy a hug for us. Hi Natalie, hi Ben, hi Ollie. You are at, or you used to be at the daycare with Caden and Kaysen. I remember your names, I'm glad you're joining us. So here's what I need to gather up for your challenge today. You need to go find some toilet paper rolls, okay? You need to find some potting soil, and if you don't have potting soil, the difference between potting soil and dirt is this has a lot more nutrients in it, so you can see that this is very dark brown and rich, but you might have an area where you were digging for worms yesterday. How many people got to do that? Did you go out and find some worms? You might find some of this really rich soil where you found the worms. So this is potting soil that I bought in a bag. But if you find some of this very rich type of soil out in your yard, this would be perfect to start your plant. So I need that. I need my toilet paper rolls. And then I need some kind of a seed. I picked some sunflower seeds. And you can either get those out of the middle of a sunflower. You can get them from a bag at the store. You can get them from a seed packet. So I'm gonna use those, and then I got two little baby tomato plants that we're going to do something with today. So I'm gonna hand this off to Mr. Sparks. I hope you guys are enjoying the sunshine today wherever you're at, and we're gonna get started, and I'm gonna show you what we're working on. So take a toilet paper roll, and as you can see, I got most of the toilet paper off, but there's still a little there, that's okay. I cut there and directly opposite, and I'm cutting about an inch up, and then I make one more cut, and another cut. And you guys know, remember what she said about measuring. You can always measure. That's right, so I could, I'm guessing that that's about an inch and a half, but it might be about an inch. So then I'm gonna fold down the four pieces. This is making the bottom of my pot. Look at that, it's a very simple little Pot. And when, when seeds are tiny, like this tomato plant was probably a seed at one time, and in the greenhouse, they planted them in a very tiny little pot like this so that they could put soil inside and they could put the seed inside and it protects it. And then when it got a little bigger, they transferred it to a little bigger pot. And then in a few minutes, I'm going to put it in an even bigger pot because that's how the roots have plenty of space to move a bigger pot. So once I have my little pot like this, then I'm going to put some soil in it. You can just reach in with your hands, fill it up, and you kind of got to hold the bottom of course because if you don't it's going to explode and all of it will fall out the bottom. Then I'm going to, I think I'll just take a couple of my sunflower seeds and I don't have the seed packet for this, but if you look on a seed packet, on the back, it's going to give you the same directions that it gave me on this plant. It's going to tell me how deep to plant it, how big it's going to get, and all of that information. But I kind of know from sunflowers, because I've planted them before, I'm gonna poke my finger in about to my second knuckle. So here's my first knuckle, about to my second knuckle. You can see that. And then I'm going to drop those little seeds in very carefully. I'm going to cover them up and I don't want to smash it because when that new little plant starts growing, I want it to be able to come up out of the soil pretty easy. You can see I've covered it up. And the last thing I need to do is give it some water. So I'm going to go get a little watering can or a cup. I'm going to put some water in it and then I think this little plant I'll probably take inside. And what I usually do inside, I didn't bring it out today, I take like one of my um, brownie pans and I line these up 
in a brownie pan so they'll stand up and they won't fall over and that way they can keep growing inside and I make sure I put them in the window and if it's a nice day I can put them outside on the porch so they get some fresh air and some sunshine so that is how you could start from a seed if you wanted to start from a seed of course you could always put your seeds I'm trying to get this to not fall over let me lean it over here you could always put your seeds in a bigger pot so I've got this pot but with this pot what I want to do is transplant these two tomato plants so here's the little stake the spike that tells me this is going to be a salsa tomato it tells me that it needs six hours of light every day and then it needs to be about three feet apart and I need to bury two-thirds of the plant so if I think of this plant as a whole thing and I divide it into three pieces it's going to start clear down here so this would be about a third this would be about a third and this would be the three-thirds so I don't want to bury it clear up here because I don't want to bury the leaves but I'm going to bury quite a bit of this stem down in my pot so that it has a good base because once the wind starts blowing it can blow my tomato plant over so what I did was just squeeze this little pot hold it in my hand and then oh, look it pulls right off and look at all those strings like things those are roots so I told you this these roots were coming out the bottom of the pot that meant it was time for these roots to have some more space to grow so right now I'm gonna be very gentle with this plant and I know that when it gets full size, it's going to need about 36 inches to grow. It's going to get tall, and I'll show you a tall tomato plant here in a minute. But I'm going to make a hole big enough so that I can get about, okay, measuring with my hand, I'm going to go about up to the top of my fingertips in the pot. And I'm going to stick the plant down there carefully in that hole. And then I'm going to cover it up with the potting soil. And again, don't push it down hard. Because if you push it down hard, those roots will be smashed and they won't be able to come up. Now, in this pot, I'm going to go ahead and plant two. So I'm going to make another hole about to the top of my fingers. I'm going to do the same thing. And this is the same kind of tomato plant. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm gonna squish the sides and I can feel it start coming out. I'm gonna gently pull so I don't rip the roots. And then I'm going to put it in the hole that I made up to my fingertips and cover it up. Now, these won't be able to stay in this pot clear through the summer because they're going to need some more space to grow. But guess what? Now I have a new little pot that I can use when this one gets a little bigger and starts to grow. I can put this whole thing in there because toilet paper rolls will dissolve in the soil. They will disintegrate. That means that the, they're going to break down, especially if I have a worm in there. The worm's gonna help me do that job. But when they get wet, they kind of fall apart. So I could put this whole thing down in this pot and then it would be a little bigger pot that I could use until I'm ready to put it into a large pot. Or I might take these sunflowers and plant them out in my yard, like in my flower bed. So the last thing I wanna show you for your challenge, so basically you're gonna take your toilet paper roll, you're gonna cut four cuts. There's one, it's about an inch to an inch and a half, two, three, four and you want to leave some space between them you're going to fold to make the bottom of your pot oh i didn't get that one cut far enough so you can cut a little more if you need to fold and then it becomes your little pot for some potting soil now let me take this tomato plant that started out as a seed and we're going to go over and look at the big tomato plant this tomato plant will end up being will 
end up looking something like this tomato plant. And this one has gotten a lot taller. You can see how big it is. Remember my direction said that I needed to give this about 36 inches, so that's about three feet. So about a yardstick, it's gonna need that much space. So when these plants get a little bigger, I'll take them out and put them in this pot and this plant will go in my garden. This helps the leaves to keep from breaking. And especially when the tomatoes start growing, these, these um, branches get really heavy. And so if I don't have this um, cage around it, they're going to fall on the ground and then they'll either get rotten or animals will start eating them like the ants and things. But look here, boys and girls, this is the blossom. Remember when we talked about pumpkins in the fall and how they have a blossom? And the pumpkin blossom is orange and then it dies and then a little pumpkin starts to grow. Well, this is what a tomato blossom looks like. It's yellow and after it blooms, it's going to die and a little tiny tomato is going to start growing right there. I hope you have fun today. Make sure you wash your hands. Ugh, look at Mrs. Sparks. I'm gonna have to do some scrubbing. She got some nasty hands today. I hope you have, I need to flip my camera again. I hope you have a great time planting today and enjoying the sunshine. Mr. Sparks wants to see your pictures of worms. So if you found some worms, show us what you found, show us where they were living and where they were hiding, and then maybe put one of them inside your pot so that you can help the plants grow a little better. Can't wait to see you. I am so glad to see all my friends logging on and I know my kindergartners and preschoolers are having a lot of fun being out of school, but I wanna see some of the things you're working on. So send me pictures or I just got a card from Wrigley today. You could send me a letter in the mail too. I'll post my address and then we could be pen pals and we could write back and forth through the mail. That would be awesome. I'm gonna go wash my hands, but I got a little more planting to do. Have a great afternoon.